This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on India and the fourth industrial revolution. The participants are Jitain Kumar Jain, cyber expert, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. Inaugurating the two-day center state science conclave in Ahmedabad yesterday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for concerted efforts to turn India into a global research and innovation center over the next 25 years, the Amrit Khan. Mr. Jain, how do you see this effort to make science-based development a pan-India movement? And how important is the center-state collaboration for India to become a global research and innovation hub? If you look at the this whole speech in larger perspective, India missed the first two industrial revolutions, the steam engine and the second industrial revolution, because we were not a free nation. The proceeds of our hard work were taken by the people who were ruling over us. We did not benefit as much as we would have from the third industrial revolution, which was basically driven by technology and computers, because we were in the we had just gotten our freedom. We were building our institutes. We were building our capabilities. Now there is a fourth industrial revolution which is happening. We are in the dawn of digital age. Now this fourth industrial revolution will be powered by artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other scientific technologies. So in a way, Prime Minister is trying to ensure that whatever we missed in last two centuries, we do not miss the bus this time. He is trying to ensure that we build an ecosystem, we build research and innovation facilities, we build a collaboration between state governments, central governments, and the scientific institutions and academia, so that India becomes a global hub of research and innovation. And whatever we innovate, we should celebrate that. We should acknowledge that. We should celebrate the innovations of our scientists. And in a way, he's trying to ensure that no talent, especially from the scientific sector, travels outside from India and settle outside. We have seen brain drain in the last 30 years in the technology sector. Best of our minds from Indian Institute of Technologies, best of our scientists left for the Western countries for greener pastures, and they never came back. Now he's trying to ensure that if these Indian individuals can lead global corporate, can carry out the mass scale innovations in the global research institutes, we should build an ecosystem in India where they can stay back in India and innovate here, and we should celebrate and benefit from those innovations. The Prime Minister also said that the centre and states have to cooperate and collaborate with the scientific community to frame modern policies that meet local needs such as affordable housing, promote climate resilient agriculture and boost circular economy through waste processing. He asked states to promote research and innovation as per their local needs. Do you feel uh, this will promote ease of living on various fronts in the long run because Science, after all, has been the provider of ease. Prime Minister comes from a different perspective here. A lot of countries across the world have focused on innovations in the transport sector, aviation sector, power sector. India has done that too. We had focused a lot on uh, digital sector. But at the same time, our government on this Prime Minister is trying to ensure that the people who are at the last leg of our society, the people who are working at the far end, especially in the agricultural sector, who do not have enough wealth to benefit from those big scale innovation, they also benefit equally. They also become the equal part to become the equal participants and beneficiaries of this innovation. For example, Digital India campaign is not only for industrial India, not only for technology sector, it is not only for big scale corporate. The benefits are also going to the poor people who are the last result of society by giving them ease of delivery in public services. Single window clearance for a lot of government skills. This country during the pandemic fed a population which is collectively more than Europe and America combined by giving direct benefit of 5,000 rupees because these people had Jandan accounts, these people had Aadhaar. The banking infrastructure which was taken to the doorstep of poor people. So look at Jandan, look at Aadhaar, look at this mobile based economy. Everybody is benefiting. I mean Ola or Uber or you the so called delivery revolutions. I mean people People who are at the lower side of society have also benefited. Look at education. I mean, today, any person sitting in a far off village in India can get access to the best of lectures and videos and trainings which are imparted from IITs or foreign universities. We have taken best of our medical care from the heart of Delhi to the rural villages in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. So technology has to benefit for all. And if it has to benefit for all, it has to be innovated here back at home in India. And for that, you need infrastructure, you need collaboration between state government and scientists and central government. So this is the ecosystem the Prime Minister is trying to build. 
the prime minister urged the stakeholders to take uh, the country's scientific institutions out of the state of uh, silos for their optimum utilization he said that uh, unlike western countries as you said the work of the indian scientists was not given due uh, recognition in the past in our country which led to a large section of society becoming indifferent towards science you think this new effort of government to celebrate achievements of our scientists will help science become part of our society part of our culture and encourage more talent in this direction for the first 20 30 years of our independent india focused on a uh, building a strong army and strong agriculture based economy and that is why we always said jai jawan jai kisan it was shastri ji who realized that the third industrial revolution will contribute much more to india and we'll have to shift our economy and our society to the industrial sector and then he started saying jai jawan jai kisan jai vigyan and that is how india started focusing on science now prime minister realizes that the time has come 40 years later that now we have to sell liberate and focus on research and innovation and that is why he is saying jai jawan jai kisan jai vigyan jai anusandhan so celebrate research celebrate innovation now this whole focus and whole imperative on ensuring that we have enough facilities world class infrastructure convenience of business and ecosystem for research available in india so that best of our minds when who last in 30 years left for us and europe worked in american centers or european centers the best of minds at nasa best of minds at google facebook or microsoft whatever you name it they all left from india they are leading those companies and institutions today so if we can somehow build an infrastructure where this talent can stay back in india and help india leap frog in the development and leap frog into the fourth industrial revolution and become a global powerhouse of research and innovation this country will immensely benefit and those benefits will be shared equally by every section of society just by retaining the talent due to the significant increase in investment in science and technology and focused efforts of the government india jumped to 46th position from 81st yes. in global innovation index yes. in the last 6 years yes. and india is now the world's leading startup ecosystem with more than 107 unicorns and 77000 startups uh, mr jain do you think this momentum will get a fill up with the government's renewed push to science and innovation well of course is a figure and achievement to celebrate but i think there is much more than this statistics which is happening today in our society look at the covaxin vaccine in which was developed in india i mean we did not get who approval in time many of the countries were not willing to accept our vaccines we had a population of 140 crore people to feed we had a indian vaccine which world was not willing to approve of but india had confidence on its own scientists india gave them infrastructure india gave them enough push enough security in case of failure. Yes. Prime Minister himself took that vaccine. He pushed every single bureaucrat in the government, the senior bureaucrat, to take co-vaccine, not a foreign COVID shield. Now that is the confidence you inspire among public, and the confidence you give to your own scientists that government and society will stand by in their innovations and courage and support them by taking risk. And today we have seen probably we have had the best vaccine in terms of co-vaccine, the most risk-free vaccine. And it worked really well that we could inoculate our society with the two doses without any much of foreign dependence. I would say so. and you look at other things in the space sector also even a small satellite launch you will find often prime minister goes to isro center it is not because he is just going there for a visit or he is visiting just for tourism purposes it is standing by those scientists both in their success and failure so that encouragement and the confidence you give them that government will stand by the leadership will stand by even in failures this is what encourages research and innovation and the risk innovate and the risk of failure so i think the moment a person feels that even in failure our society and leadership will stand by that is the key stone to the building blocks of success you will get ultimately and this is the change we are happening i think this is the bigger reason we have to celebrate and once you do this automatically of course you will jump in the innovation index so i think this is a new india where we feel that we especially in technology sector we will transform ourselves from a outsourcing economy to a entrepreneurial economy where we will not be the biggest outsourced jobs in the world we will give jobs to the world In fact, a record 50% uh, increase in patent registrations happened over the last seven years. Is this another endorsement of the buoyancy in our innovation ecosystem? Would you say can encouragement at the state level, the local level, which the Prime Minister has stressed upon, give further impetus to the spirit of innovation in India? Of course, yes. And I think if we remove politics from this uh, whole discussion, 
some states do have taken cue i mean look at best of it revolution in last two decades happened in hyderabad you know hyderabad became the cyberabad the cyber city then it happened in bangalore both were not bjp rule states then bjp came into power they changed the entire ecosystem startup india gave immense boost to indian startups ease of business registration today you can register a patent almost free or eligible cost due to the everything being borne by the central government central government is encouraging every state to have an incubator promote startups telangana city hub is doing one of the best in the startup i mean again it's not a bjp rule government but every support possible is given by the central government even to the states of where which are ruled by opposition parties which are trying to do anything with startups and research and innovation so this is an example of collective and collaborative federalism where central government is doing everything possible in their hand to support states to build an ecosystem which will celebrate the success of scientists and make every possible facility available in every state every district for even small kind of research and innovation in fact mr jain government has brought in several initiatives like atal innovation mission wherein more than 75 lakh students connected with nearly 10000 atal tinkering labs yes. in schools across the country yes. and the pm yes. research fellowship giving a research grant for more than rupees 50 lakh to complete phd you feel initiatives such as these are crucial for nurturing the spirit of scientific innovation among the youth of our country so idea was to ensure that people look at science they should not run away from science and maths we had an era where everybody was trying to become an mba everybody was trying for arts and commerce people wanted to be a chartered accountant or something else but then we are giving push and encouragement to our students to take up science and if you want to do it in a manner that they themselves want to do it then is the best is to expose them to the scientific world to the small achievements and research and atal tinkering labs by setting iot labs and giving them facilities to experiment with the new gadgets and small technological infrastructure and in every district and every school so i think it is a great opportunity equalizer and atal innovations our labs are there in almost every school government school private school so it is not necessary that only a very rich or high society school will have those facilities almost every school has it now so this level playing field and a level playing opportunity ka chance for every student in india to have at least an exposure to the technology which is going to drive the fourth industrial revolution it, this is an attempt so you expose a child in early age to the science and technology so that many of them start pursuing career in those fields and once they start pursuing career you provide enough scholarships infrastructure or educational facilities within the educational institute and research institutes so that they study in india and once they graduate from india then the government is trying to ensure that they do further research and innovation staying here in india and if they innovate something then government buys those innovation there is an opportunity available for them to commercialize their products so government is giving preference to indian startups in the procurements also without any term deposits or they are giving preference in make in india campaign the indian products are given preference over the foreign products so it's a whole ecosystem down the cycle which is being built not just one off initiative here and there idea is to ensure that every innovation even if the slightest level finds a comfort home back here in india how do you see india playing global leadership role in the forthcoming fourth industrial revolution or which has probably started where do you see india in this whole uh, let's say the global ecosystem of fourth industrial revolution if you look at 5 years i think every big tech corporate today is led by an indian be it microsoft google or you know other companies now adobe now celebrating these achievements just because these people are of indian origin is one thing but then also looking at our failures and trying to ensure that these indian origin people should have been indians they should not have left home and trying to learn from those mistakes and trying to you know ensure we build an ecosystem here is another which government is trying to do second today one out of every 10 unicorn is today an indian be it zomato bajus you name anyone paytm so there is these companies are enlisting themselves here in india not in a foreign stock market so that is an ecosystem what we are trying to build that if we continue to build this ecosystem and if we continue to ensure that indian leadership is available in india indian talent is serving the indian companies and indian companies are serving the world sitting here in india not otherwise that we are serving the global companies sitting back home it is indian companies which have to serve countries globally now so this whole effort maybe in a decade or so will result in a way that india will be one of the most strongest digital economy Economies in the world where our scientists, our researchers in artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning will dominate the world. And once you dominate these, then these are dual-use technologies, especially AI and ML. These will also result in the military export. I mean, today cyber defense is one of the fastest-growing industries in the world. We already have a large talent pool in the software and IT sector, which can be transformed and transitioned to the cyber defense and cyber security. So these efforts, in a way, then will lead to India as a strong military power, India as a strong economy. power and india as a strong scientific power I mean, what israel is today maybe india will be tomorrow thank you so much mr jain for this incisive and inspiring discussion thank you ma'am 
You were listening to a discussion on India and the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The participants were Jitain Kumar Jain, cyber expert, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.